I'm Mrs. Hayden, Mr. Conley's back there. So we both work with sixth graders along with uh, the other band instructors from South and the high school also come and teach lessons here at Parkview. So if you hear your child talk about another teacher, that's why. Because everybody kind of has their specialized instrument that they teach. And so Mrs. Williams comes from the high school. She teaches a lot of saxophone lessons. Um, Mr. Poppin from the high school teaches a lot of trumpet lessons. Mr. Newhart from Southview teaches a lot of percussion. And Mrs. Rumba from Southview teaches a lot of low brass. So they might have somebody else for their lessons and me or Mr. Bowman for band. So that's kind of how that works. We're excited um, that we have lots of beginners this year, but it does kind of create a new set of problems because we have so many beginners. So we're here tonight just kind of for us to give you an idea of how it really works band at Parkview and some tips for success, really success as an instrumentalist at Parkview as a sixth grader. All right, where should we start? Um, I think I'll just kind of walk you through like what your students, what a week at Parkview looks like in band. Um, it's a little different than maybe if you grew up in our band program or if you had other kids that went to other schools who are on like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday schedule. Um, Parkview is on a six day cycle. So we have A days and B days. And so all of these kids have band either on an A day or a B day. And then they have a lesson cycle that's every six school days. And that's where um, I always explain this to fifth graders in the spring. And I'm like, did you guys get this? And they're all like, yes, we got it. And then they come to park and they're like, I'm so confused. How does this work? Um, basically, our cycle starts on an A1 day. So this Friday is an A1 day. And then every other day, we go A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3. So the way we schedule our lessons is on that cycle day. So your student would be, for example, on A1. Well, they're not going to have another lesson until between Friday the 5th until Tuesday the 16th. So a lot of time can lapse between a lesson and that's where I think we have to be like really upfront with both parents and students that these aren't weekly lessons they're every six school days and when you get something like a three-day weekend thrown in then they, there can be a lot of time in between lessons so I like to call the lessons more like a checkup uh, just to make sure that everything is going in the right direction um, we will try to play everything that we assign to the students, um, but really help them if there's anything that they're struggling with so that they can go back home and practice and feel confident practicing the next assignment. Um, where I teach privately, um, I have a private studio of about six trumpet players that I teach every Monday night. And we have a half hour, it's one-on-one, -on -one, and I meet with them every night, every Monday night, once a week. That to me is a lesson, and that's where we'll really get to break things down. We'll practice technique, we'll practice tone, we'll practice music. Um, a lot of times the kids will be ready for um, all state, things like that. That's a lesson. I think we almost do kind of a disservice calling what we do a lesson. I think they're checkups, and if you can see that schedule and understand that it's not weekly contact with an instructor, and it's generally in a group of students. So your student might be paired up with another kid who plays their same instrument who's also a beginning level. Um, it's really not like a private lesson, okay? So that's, that's the one thing that I think we just have to be straight with everybody about. Um, also, if you look at um, what our schedules look like for our teachers, so th these are our teacher's schedules, and so they're in three different buildings every day, every cycle day. So you can see the kind of the, the color coding. Blue would be Parkview, and maroon is Ankeny High School. So when we're not in the building, 
we're teaching lessons somewhere else. We're teaching kids at the high school, or we're teaching kids at, at Southview. And that's really great, um, but it does kind of limit our flexibility to get to the kids, maybe to give them extra help or, or extra um, outside of band time, okay? So that's kind of the, the real story about lessons at Parkview. Um, so what we will do, all of us, all six of us that teach lessons, we will write down an assignment for the students. So this is what you should be practicing between now and the next time I see you. And we write that down in something called a lesson log. You can pull that up. Sure. Um, it's shared with the students in Google Drive. Uh, we kind of can automatically just push those out to the students. If you as parents want access to it, you can just request access from your students' Chromebook. They can send you the link. And if they send you the link, then we can give you access to it too. Um, because I know, like in my house, when my son comes home from a piano lesson and I sit down to listen to him practice, I always want to say, what, what were you supposed to be working on this week? So I'll ask him to open up his piano teacher's notebook and say, okay, we're doing this page in this book, this page in this book, this page in this book. We do the same thing for band students. Um, we also, most of us try to write in the lesson book and show you the, the lesson pages that we have assigned. Um, but honestly, sometimes that doesn't get done just because there's there might be four kids walking out of the room and four more kids walking in. So this is something we all, this is something we're all tight with, we all do. So this is what a lesson log looks like. It's just a spreadsheet. Um, on the left side, the instructor writes all this in. So like we have the date, um, we'll always score the lesson based on a meets to exceeds rubric. So four would be exceeding, three would be meeting. You can see that a lot of times we do exceed. Um, and then the next assignment, so like this young lady was assigned lesson three, number seven through 10, and lesson four. And then the instructor might put in a, a comment in, like we had an assessment today, or we went over the notes in our tone calisthenics. Um, and then over here, this is where we really would like the students to log their practice time. And I think of practice time like I think of people who are trying to manage their weight. You know, if you weigh yourself every day, studies have shown you will lose weight. If you write down your practice time every day, even if it's a zero, you will practice more. And I can tell you that there are no band students, zero band students, that choose to practice over video games or choose to practice over hanging out with their friends outside. Um, you know, my kids in my house are the same exact way. We have to make that part of like our chores list. This is what we do because the payoff is going to be we can do awesome things later. And it, it does, it takes time. So um, that's kind of, that's what we really would like to see is like, even though this young lady didn't practice every day, she wrote something down so that she's kind of accountable, first of all, to herself that she's practicing. So uh, that's the lesson law. There's something else I was going to say about that. About the lesson law? Yeah, or. Well, that, so this document is shared between the teacher and the student. Yeah. So if you wanted to see it, just ask them to pull it up on their Chromebook. So, um, this is Amy mentioned beginning band um, in Ankeny, and I know several of you moved in from other districts. In Ankeny, we start kids in band in fifth grade. Um, that doesn't mean you can't start, obviously, after fifth grade, but we also don't have a beginning band class. So, they're assigned to a band with their team. And, um, like you, one young man said to me last week, he was kind of listening to the other kids in the team playing, and he said, Am I behind these kids? Yes, you are. You started a year later. That's okay. With practice, you can catch up and you can be playing in the concert in December. But it's, I think, important for all of us to realize that um, most of the kids in these bands, we might listen to them play and think, well, I can do that too. They're my same age. Well, they're a year older in band age. 
So we just have to be patient about you know, our immediate expectations, but also take the view of, if I practice every day, I can and I will catch up to them. So what we're doing with beginners right now is that during band class, um, and most of them have been doing this now because they're ready to do it, they go off into a practice room and they work on smart music. So smart music is something that we purchased here at school for kids and I've given them all assignments and they can work on those assignments with Smart Music. It's a, a inner, kind of interactive program. It has a microphone, it listens to them play, and then gives them a score at the end of that. And if their score is good, then they click Submit, and then they can go on to the next exercise. So, so really, um, it's a lot of individual work for our students that are beginners in sixth grade. So they get that once a week, once a cycle, check up with the lesson teacher, but the rest of the time they're really on their own, um, working in a practice room, trying to improve their skills on their own. So just so that you know that's, that's what it is, they're not in, actually in a band um, playing with the other kids yet. And as soon as they get to a point where they know enough notes to do that, then we'll just move them right into the band. Okay, questions about that? So, so the smart music, is um, is great, but it, it does cost money. And if you wanted to uh, purchase a subscription, I can tell you how to do that. It's about $40 a year, I think. And it, it works really well. Um, we use it at school, like I said, and you can use it at home. You can't really use it on Pro Books, correct? Yes, right? there's, a, there's a different Smart Music yeah. app that our system doesn't That's really subscribe really to, yeah. so it doesn't work. So we found this this year, and our fifth graders actually use it, but it's the Essential Elements book, and they have their own interactive program. And I found this book in the garbage this week, and inside it, there's a code um, right on the front cover, a unique code to this book. So if you purchase a book, you get this code. So whoever used this book last year, they didn't sign up and use the code, so it was an available code. So I was able to log on as a student and get signed up for it, and I think it works really, really well. And that would be something that they could practice at school in the practice room, and then they could take their instrument home and the Chromebook home, and they could practice that same thing at home also. So I was gonna show you what it looks like and I know, Isaac, you've looked at it, right? Yeah, have you looked at the, um, the essential elements? So I already logged on and created an account. It was pretty, pretty self-explanatory, pretty user-friendly. And then you go to this um, music studio in the corner here. And when you, when you log on, uh, You tell it what instrument you play, and then when you click on the music studio, then the correct music comes up. So I signed up as a clarinet player, and I can push play, and I can play along with the music, and I can hear a clarinet playing along with me.
versus forty dollars a year for smart music, I think, would be a great option for yeah, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it should be available at all the local music stores mm -hmm. because it is it's the fifth grade method fifth grade for method. Ankeny and probably several other local districts. Right. And really, if your student can play the first half of that book, then they're probably ready to sit in the sixth grade band. Yeah. I mean, that is supposed to be our fifth grade band. We're supposed to get everybody through that in fifth grade band, but not everybody does. And, and really, I think if you could get halfway through, they're ready. And that's our goal. We want to get them into the group band as soon as we can. Yeah, because that's the fun stuff. Yeah. Is playing with your friends. Okay. What questions do you have or what maybe obstacles and students you, you speak up to? What uh, challenges maybe are you facing right now? Absolutely. So the method books that we use walk them through like they've never seen a sheet of music before. Mm -hmm. So when they learn the first fingering, they also learn where it's at on the staff. Uh, they learn how to count the rhythms. All of that is in the method books that we use. Um, but we do kind of have a whole range of kids with previous experience. I mean, some kids have played piano before. Um, some kids maybe have sang in a church choir before. And in some kids, this is like their first musical experience. So all of that is kind of assumed kind of from base level for these books that we're going to kind of start from step one. And the book, she has a book? Or is that online? Well, so what we, when you didn't really know about this book and all that you could do with it when we sent out our beginning band email. So the book that we recommended that you buy is the book that everybody else is using in sixth grade, right? But they're not beginners. Um, and it works as a beginner book, but and I think it's great to have that book to move into later, but we think that maybe this would be a better book to start with, work through you know, at least half of this book, and then maybe move into the, the sixth grade book that we use. And mostly just because, not, I mean, there's so many method books and they're all great, but mostly because this gives these kids the support mm -hmm. that they can use on their device. And our method book isn't published that way. So um, it would be a nice supplement, I think, for the kids to have, because they, they have their Chromebooks everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. Is that other book you're talking about, the one that you hold, we could have ordered at the beginning of the school year? Yes. Oh, wait, because I didn't order that one because I didn't turn in the sheet. So I just picked up that one. I thought it was the same book. You're fine. Yeah, there's two books. There's, there's a fifth grade. That's really the fifth grade book. So that's what our, all our fifth graders start in, and that's fine. And like Mrs. Hayden said, if you have the student instrumental course book, that one's fine too. This uh, is the one of the six yeah. that aren't beginners are using. And what we'll do is, once we get into full band and teamed up with another sixth grade group, we'll just jump into that book wherever it wherever it fits. So it's absolutely not a problem if you don't have that one yet. Okay. But we're, I guess what we're saying is we recommend that you would get this book um, and sign up for the interactive online program because we're hoping that that will really motivate them to play at home, play at school and play at home. Just get that much more playing time and they'll catch up faster. I think the two toughest things for young musicians to do on their own, and I'm thinking not just about these kids, but I'm thinking about the kids in my house that are young musicians. Number one is getting the instrument set up correctly, like making sure that all the pieces are together, especially for woodwinds, is the read on correctly, um, and just making that first fundamental sound. Hopefully we've got these kids to the point where they're they're pretty comfortable doing that by now. Uh, but that's always the first thing that I check. If, if my kid or, or my student says, hey, my instrument doesn't sound right, well, let's check that it's put together correct. And, and there's a tutorial in the front of all of these books about how to do that. The second biggest challenge, I think, to home practice is, I don't know how this is supposed to sound. And 
even if you're really good at reading music or counting notes and all that, if you don't know what it's supposed to sound like, if you don't have a model, it's kind of hard to practice to make it happen that way. And so you as parents, if you are comfortable showing them how it goes or helping them with it, that's, I think that's the best model, is parents helping. But if you're not comfortable with that, this is really awesome because as you can hear, it's a good clarinet sound or it's a good flute sound, whatever instrument it is, um, that then they can at least have a model that they know I, that's what I'm supposed to sound like. So I think this kind of takes care of at least one of those big hurdles to practice. What else? What other maybe concerns or area? I think it can. There's a microphone up here, and I don't know, Isaac and I, did we experiment with that when we were doing that? Do you remember? I believe it does if you set the microphone to record, which is a good thing because then you can listen back and go, do I sound like I thought 